for Crafty Gemini Creates, and we are here with my friend Amy Barrickman, designer and author and fabulous owner, right? Been in the game for like for 25 a little while. years. For yeah. a little while. <laughs> she owns Indigo Junction. You guys are probably familiar with some of her patterns. Actually, in some of the previous tutorials I've done right here on Crafty Gemini Creates, I use the Crossroad Denim fabric, and that's your fabric yes, line as well. thank you. Awesome Love stuff. Love it. So today we're going to be working on this really cool men's shirt apron, right? We're going right. to be repurposing a men's shirt. Upcycling. Recycling. Super so hot. hot right Super now. hot right now. You're right. So let's get started. What kind of a shirt are we looking for? Well, we are looking for a man's shirt and we want something that we can, that actually when you're thinking about fit, it's whatever, if you're making it for a large man, you want to look for a large shirt. Got it. So make it to fit and we're going to go ahead and um, look for one that also has a nice placket on the back okay. or a yoke. Is there a specific fiber um, content we're looking we for? We like, oh... 100% cotton or polyester. It really doesn't matter. And you can either have long sleeve or short sleeve. Oh, so both will work. Right. Okay, cool. Long, you'll have a little extra. Yeah, and you'll have extra stuff. You right. can embellish, add right. pockets, right? Exactly. All right, so what are we doing here? We have this kind of shirt. Do you right. want to show some of these options sure, real quick? Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. So this is um, what we have here. I love the idea of school spirit or sports. college teens. Sports yeah, teams. exactly. So you can find shirts like this at the thrift store, or you can move on to a plaid, maybe for a Christmas holiday apron. Maybe yeah. it's maybe it's grandpa's shirt that you're repurposing as a gift for a granddaughter, daughter. Even it's really a unisex, unisex apron. apron. So cool. it could be um, for a grandson too. And my favorite is the gingham. Mm -hmm. And the gingham <laughs> is so hot right now. <laughs> so you can have a lot of fun, like with a contrasting binding on this, something fun and different, maybe yellow or pink or something. Cool. So, those, so lots to choose So pretty from. much anything. And if you hunt. don't have one at home, you can hit up a thrift store, what, 10 right. cents a quarter, you can probably grab some to exactly. try it out. Yeah. So. And if it has stains on it and everything, we're going to show you some ways to get around that because you're not going to be using the entire right. shirt. Right, right. you can kind of right. work with it, right? Right. Okay, so we have one here. Nice. Should we talk about the book and where the original oh, pattern sure, came absolutely. from? Kind of just so here it is. So the pattern that we're actually using is available in the vin her Vintage Notions book. And remember that I always include a link in the description box below where you can find all the materials, books, supplies, and things that we're using in each tutorial. So tell us about your little book. Well, <laughs> this book has magic patterns in it. Okay. And, uh, what the book is based on are the lessons from a women's institute from the 1920s. Oh, cool. And one of the magic patterns is for this apron. There's 12 in the book, projects. There's four other four aprons total, total. in the book. Okay. So we're doing um, one of them today. This one that we're going to show you how to create the men's uh, shirt apron is January. featured. The instructions are in here as well. Yeah, it's month awesome. by month. So oh, cool. It's so, fun so 12 too. projects total in the book. Exactly. Great. So. Also, oh. we'll let you put that. All right, to so the we're going to be working on this one. This, I would say, is from the four patterns in the book, is probably the best for a beginner. Yes, right? totally. Okay. Very simple. It's going to. It's so simple. That's the. That's what I love about it. Um, so, to get started, we're going to go ahead and cut off. You can see here we ha have the collar that we're going to remove. Okay, so we're basically deconstructing the shirt to get it ready to turn it into an actual apron. Right. So let's bring this down here. You can see where the collar was, and so just to make note of where exactly it was cut you cleared the bulk right, of that, the seam here. Yeah, that okay. double weight there. So let's finish cutting that off. So you basically Perfect. you're just ending up with a raw edge right here through the placket over to the shoulder seams. Right. Okay, great. Exactly. Next step? Next step, you're gonna take the seam, um, the arms off, okay. uh, the sleeves off essentially. So and let's put it right here. Yep. Go ahead and, and so cut. I'm clearing inside, closest yes. to the inside yes, of the shirt you do to that. get rid of this bulk of this right. big flat Then you'll have seam. a nice clean, um, single fitness that you'll be putting your bias trim. And do I have to stay kind of really close to this or does it matter if um, I come I like to. It just in? gives you more options um, okay. and you want to make Easy. sure you have what you need. So yep. we'll do that to both so, sides. Yep. This okay. one is removed. So now you have like a vest. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And now we're moving on to removing the pocket. And so, so why are we removing do that? the pocket? Do we have to move, remove it? Or? We, yes, because the pocket is actually going to be one of the straps. Is so like be... the area that the pocket is on, right? Right, okay. right. Okay, so the idea is that the back of the shirt right here is going to be the front. front. Is that right? right? Like right. yours. So let's talk a little bit about the difference here. Okay. Yours, the one you're wearing here is not, doesn't no. look like this. this. Mine has the pleats on the side. Sometimes you'll have sh shirts with two pleats out on the sides. Okay. Sometimes you'll have the center. You want to just make sure you have a nice yoke when you look at your shirt. Okay. Um, so so you can this is going to be right here. Just right. like you see the yoke running right. here, this will be the front. Right. So if the back of the shirt is the front of the apron, the front of the shirt is going to be from the straps. straps. That's right. why and you just that. clear right over the shoulders. Easy peasy. So when you take the, the pocket off. Seam ripper time. Yes. The seam <laughs> ripper. It comes oh, we in all love handy. Our seam ripper. Oh, yes. 
Um, so what we've done is you can see here where I've removed the little stitches. Sometimes this can be difficult, mm -hmm. but you want to remove that pocket and maybe you can use it later. Okay. So put, put that to the side once you Just have gone through. Take your time. It. Try not yeah. to poke into the fabric and rip it if you're going to repurpose it. Right. And, and then... then just pull the little yeah, threads. Yeah, pull the strings. And usually maybe, oops, hit it with a little bit of steam or something to get right. rid of the, the, Spritz the needle it. holes, the stitch holes. Okay. Right. That's what I like to do. Easy. And really, that's going to be on your back strap, so okay. you're not going to see much of it. So are we done with this? We are done with so that. So we've removed the collar. Let's recap. Right. Removed the two sleeves. And remember, we're staying, we're clearing the bulk of those chunky seams. Right. We've removed the pocket. And I think there's one, one more step. One more thing. step. You got me. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go and cut up the side seams. Okay. And when you do that, you want, you know that the front of your apron is the back of the shirt. So right. let's keep um, inside that flat got felt it. So seam. So instead of cutting towards the front of the shirt, we'll have the bulk of that seam. So instead, I'm going to cut... Again, clearing that flat right. felt seam. As straight as you can get it, right? You can kind of yes. touch it up a little bit later. And sometimes you can just run that, the, the blade scissors of it, right, right, some right of along that. Some silky shirts that are really, or some really sharp Thick, shears. Thickness of so the seam. So the front of the shirt is this. You want the fresh, raw edge here with no bulky hem right. on there. Okay. And that'll end up being the sides of your apron. And we'll do that to the apron. second side as well. Correct. Great. So you'll end up with, let's see, the next. The magic. Here it is. Okay. Let's open it up. So everybody can see kind of the what it looks the like. finished shape. So this right. is what you end up with. And we haven't even sewn yet. <laughs> I know. It's like done. It's like an apron. So that's going to be the front, right? Correct. And from these two chunks that were on the front of the shirt, we're going to cut out our strap. So show us how to do that okay. part. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and place the apron, uh, fold it on a center back. On the center back. So right. vertically Line down up. the center, match right. up your raw edges. And you want to get these um, yoke seams and shoulder seams lined up. Because those are that's where we're going to be marking. Okay. Okay. And line up your placket. And Here you can go. pin this if you want to, but I feel like some, when the fabrics are a little bit thicker, it kind of holds together because yeah. of the weight of the layers. Yeah. Yeah, it does really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty. Um, All right. So shoulder seams here. You can see the pockets. Just so you guys understand the orientation of it. This is the placket going down the front, and this is the back. So right. these are our shoulders go right here, the big arm opening, right? Exactly. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure, and we're going to go an inch in from where the, the collar, collar was, at the, the shoulder line. okay put a little mark there good an inch there's in. one inch in and then we're going to go three and a half inches over, over from the initial mark we just right. made got so it i'm doing that so it's going to be just enough to kind of clear this off right. and, and give us a nice fresh edge yep. all right so and the then, idea so we're cutting the straps from here the idea right. is that the strap chunk that we're using is three and a half inches wide is that right correct Great. Right. right so our next step will be to go down to the front so you're on the front and you're going to go an inch down under the under so the let's arm. let's this here. And we're going to mark there. So this little point, you see kind of how it peaks out right here? This is the bottom of our arm, oh. our arm opening, the, the arm's arm eye. Or the sleeve seam. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So an inch down there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line to mm -hmm. create a new um, opening. And we're going to draw it up to this line. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do it freehand today and see if I can't get it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to be the opening, right? right. There you I go. You just basically have to match two points. Easy Not peasy. Not Yeah, super easy. Um, dot to dot. And next, we're going to then in go in here. Yes, sometimes you'll want, and this is personal preference, you could have a little lower So this is going to be the neckline. So remember, the back of the shirt, you're going to come down here to whatever you want. Right. And what would you recommend? I would say well, maybe go a little bit lower, maybe try it on right. before you bind right. everything exactly. and then see how you want it, how flattering you want it to. You can either just graduate it into this line. Okay. Or you can go a little bit lower. I'm just going to graduate it a Got little it. bit lower. You, but sometimes you might have less here, so mm -hmm. you want to just so watch that. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to cut the straps. All right. That's our next. Or not so cut you can them mark see. first. Yeah. So where we've marked right here is actually going to be your cut line. So we'll trim this down. We'll trim this. But we're going to go ahead and draw the lines for the straps so you can just do it all together yes. one, at once. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Quick and easy this way. So what we're going to do is just make sure we're, we're lined up again here. Mm -hmm. And... We're going to go ahead and find the, we're going to go from point to point. So the point that she's pointing at down here is the end of the front plackets. That's right? Right. Past the head, right. like right here off the edge. Right. right. So we're coming in from this. Right. And so what we're going to do, some, my ruler's not long enough, so we're going to add. Yeah, just bump it up. Yeah, let's use this one first. And add a little extension down here. Mm -hmm. And again, you'll see that 
clack it where it hits. And so just to give you an idea, this ruler measures 24 inches and she's using about four and a half inches down there. So that's the length that you'll get from the strap. If you are making it for somebody taller and you need more length, you can always just add. You'll have plenty of extra from the sleeves of the shirt, right. from other areas, from maybe right. from the or front. Or the leftover yeah. of the strap. Mm -hmm. um, All right, so we made one long line right. there, perfect. And now what we're gonna do is we want to go ahead and draw that three and a half inch line um, mark that. Mm -hmm. So I would say we plot can, a few points yeah, maybe. why don't we go ahead and plot our points down and then we'll draw the lines. Especially so if you don't have long enough half. rulers. If you don't have a 24 inch long ruler, you can definitely just use maybe a 12 inch and just plot a few points right. and then just go, you know, dot to dot and connect it to make the right. full thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Let's move down quickly here. And yeah, we're just going to mark it so you all can see exactly where your cut lines are going right. to be and then we'll move on to the next step that shows the last step really because it's all about deconstructing it, removing the collar, the two sleeves, cutting up the side so it's open here on the side of the apron and then drawing your lines to clean it up and mark it and after that all we have left to do is bind it. Right, right. This right. Is it's really joke. great. Super easy. It's a great beginner project. I'll tell you too, we also kept this hem mm -hmm. at the bottom so that can be the finished end of our strap. Oh, that's so you have great. some other Even options easier. but this makes this, I'm showing you the easiest yeah. option Why not have. use it? It's already there for right. you. Somebody else right. sewed it already. All right. right, so here's the idea. You're cleaning up the neckline, you're cleaning up the arms eye, and then it's all, notice here at the shoulder seam, we're keeping that seam right there where the yoke meets the front of the shirt, right? To right. just continue it right along so you don't have to cut it down. Awesome, so it's all coming out from Thank one you. thing. Right, and that's a solid, but this is the next step we did on a plaid, which this is a beautiful shirt. So you can see that's what you end up with, the front and then two straps that are already connected right. at the shoulders. So how are we gonna finish this off with some binding? Well, to start with, when you're, when you're working with the binding, we use a double um, bias binding. So a double full bias. So, and this is store-bought? This is store-bought. You can make it your own if you wanted to you use could, like a coordinating fabric. I'd buy it at the store. There's just nothing. Because you're going to need, what, two packs? Two packs. That's so a lot of some yardage. Because <laughs> you're going around the entire apron. Got it. Um, so what you're going to do is when you open that bias, um, you'll find that you have, you unfold it and you have a little narrower side on one. And that um, more narrow um, side is where you're going to pin right sides so, together. So that's going to be the first one that we need to attach, right. right? That goes to the raw edge. So let's show you here what she means. This is a double fold. You can see because there's two folds here. And this side, if you look at the center crease line that we have here, you can tell that this flap is just a hair, maybe one sixteenth of an inch narrower than this chunky one. So the side that's narrower, you're going to open it up. And this raw edge is what we're matching right. up with the raw edge of the apron strap. Okay. So you pin this in place. Right. And then you're going to stitch. And we're stitching right in that fold line, the right. crease line that you see in that ditch. Make right. sense? Because it makes it clean, simple. You have what you need okay. to follow. And then what you're going to do, so you can see here we have it stitched. So say you had it like that, you stitch right in the crease right. line. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to end up folding it over. And we like to encase this little edge. And you can do that just by folding in the bias end first. Right. To tuck in any raw edges. Right. And then just simply... Follow the folds in the bias itself. Right. And easy then you peasy. have a nice little finished edge. And what you're going to do next is you're going to stitch. And again, we'll stitch from this side because this wider, we can catch the wider side. So that's the idea. You're going to stitch from the side where you don't see anything and that the side that's already been sewn down. And you're just going to stitch right kind of inside a little bit. Right. And the idea is that the larger flap that we pointed out earlier is now reaching over the, the edge of the shirt. And it's giving you just a little bit more than on this side. So if you stitch in, you're going to make sure to catch this. And if you're a beginner and you're kind of not too familiar with working with bias binding, I don't know about you, but one thing I like to do is glue-based it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we could do that. I run a little bead of glue every little bit and right. kind of just press it with a hot iron to set it, and everything's going to be in it's place. Smooth. No pins. So when you know you go to sew, you know everything's right. going to get caught on the back right. side. So that's one way, way to do it. What's another option? I love the zigzag finish, too. That's true. I think it's a really good look. Um, we'll show one later that has the zigzag. Yeah, so we can ideally, I mean, I guess normally, you know, you have your machine set to straight stitch. You just straight stitch down this way. But if you're afraid of not catching it or maybe the edge on the inside is not as clean and you see it's kind of wavering a little bit as far as how it comes over, a zigzag stitch. You right. are You'll for sure going to catch everything right. with a zigzag. Right. Right. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about this one because I noticed that your binding is a little bit different than the one that right. we have here. So this is the half inch double double fold and I have the quarter inch double fold. So this fold. is like extra wide. So right. if you're just starting off and you kind of right. never have applied this stuff, I would go with this. Right. Because you just have more work surface to stitch and to make sure to catch. But if you are 
an expert at this kind of stuff. <laughs> you can, <laughs> like Amy, yeah. you can go ahead and use the thinner one. It gives it more like a, deco- a delicate finish. Yes, it's just a little, yeah. a little more petite as yeah. far as that goes. And I think with this size too, you can just sandwich the edge of the fabric. And just slip in, it in between slip the it in yeah. If you're careful and pin well or glue based, yeah. you could do it that way too, which even would just take one step out of it. Awesome. So we end up with the whole thing and the straps are loose. What's the at what point do you stitch them to the side like to That's connect That's the it? last step. Okay. So you'll want to put the apron on, check your straps, and then adjust. I'll show you here where we have. Now this this uh, strap we just finished rounded the end and continued mm-hmm. the bias around, but you could either put this um, on the inside or the outside. The strap could be okay, attached so it could be either on top way. Or tucked under right. this way. Okay. Either way. And so you just stitch them right there into place. Yep. yep. Easy. Yeah. Easy enough. Awesome. Well, and it's fun. You can, you know, adjust the size as you go. Exactly. And try it, it on and see if you need to add more length at that point. Right. You can do it. Well, right. I would do that before I touch right. the bias, though, for sure. So Cool. So let's go over quickly a little bit of the other aprons, because I think this okay. is a great beginner project one to give it a try. Super easy. I mean, the only thing you're really stitching is what? The bias binding. Right. And keep in mind that pocket. If you do want to add a pocket, you could you take could it. the pocket you took off and add it, or you could cut a pocket out of the sleeve. That's true. And, and make like a bigger one or right. something. Right. People cool. love, you know got to have a pocket yeah. these days, right? <laughs> to stuff your stuff. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so some of the other projects that are included in the Vintage Notions, or the other aprons, I should right. say. Right. We have, um, there's four different aprons, and the one of my favorites is the... Um, this one's called the men's... Um, Men's shirt apron, the one that we did. So right. that's one of the options. And that's in the, in the January book. chapter. Okay. Then in the March chapter is the slipover apron. Okay. And that apron, ha- again, has a really nice neck. It just lays flat. And it's an apron that you can either tie in back or actually wrap around for a little more of a silhouette. And it's tie been in the a really, front. people okay. love that one. Um, and then we also have the. In the September chapter, we have what's called the Comfortable Economical Apron, and that apron (laughs) is the one that is made out of a yard of fabric, and the finish on that is a really fun buttonhole stitch that we did with embroidery floss. Um, It also, they suggest also rickrack as a detail that Mm -hmm. you could add, so keep that in mind. And last but not least is the Hostess Apron, and that's in the November chapter. And that apron, I love it because it has, um, again, it's really comfortable with straps that go over the shoulders. It has side pockets, um, one on each side, and it's finished with the bias binding, just like what we did here today with this apron. Cool. So you can try this one first and then go to that one next, right? Right. Graduate and try them out. Cool. So lots, and then we have little other patterns that include everything from a fabric flower to a little purse okay. so that are you part of the magic patterns that 12, are in the book 12 projects total 12 right there. yep awesome so remember that you can click the link in the description box below to get a copy of amy's vintage notions book she also has a fabric line out and uh, all the information is right there missouri star quilt company carries all that on their online shop and i want to thank you so much for coming thank on my you show. my first was, guest on crafty gemini creates y'all it was awesome <laughs> thank I you so much appreciate it If you guys enjoyed this video tutorial, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye.